Amen, 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 and amen. To the entire world, be blessed and stay phenomenal. God is good all the time. Let us say a prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, our personal Lord and Savior, individually and collectively, God. We thank you, and we come to you by way of the grace and mercy of the power of the ever-loving Holy Spirit, God. Thank you, Father, for anointing us, Father. Thank you for appointing us, Father. And thank you for giving us assignments in life. And thank you for activating us, Father, so that we may act out on those assignments, Father. Thank you for being there step for step, moment for moment, second for second, Father. Issue for issue, Father. You are there for us. And you are there for others, God. Not just for us as individuals, Father. You are there for us collectively, God. As much, Father, as we think that we need you and we know, Father, within our hearts that we need you, God, we must remember that you did first ask us, where art thou? And Father, we are here. We are here as your nation, one race, God's race, the human race. Collectively, we stand as a Congress, Father, in congression, Father, with you, God with Jesus Christ the Nazareth, our personal Lord and Savior, with the Holy Spirit, our comfort and Father. For these and many other blessings, we will continuously pray in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazareth. By way of the grace and mercy and ever-loving power of the Holy Spirit, God, we acknowledge you here on social media, Father, on YouTube and every other platform, Father. We recognize it as your outlet, your center, Father. For you build all, Father. And if thine be lifted up, I shall draw all men, all women, all people unto me. Thank you, God, for we draw people unto you. Amen. God is good. <clears throat> Recently, I have um, done an audio book. The audio book was on the Gospel of Thomas, or the secret sayings of Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior. The Gospel of Thomas are the secret sayings of Jesus Christ. You can't find that in the Bible. We can go through this Bible right here all we want. We can go through any Bible all we want, and we will not find those secret sayings of Jesus Christ. We will find tidbits of those sayings in the Bible. But haven't you always wanted to know what Jesus, what Jesus thought, what Jesus said? Have you ever had the thought? Because I know I did. It was when I was young. I've had the opportunity or I've taken the opportunity to read the Bible front to back multiple times. And when I read the Bible, and all I see is that red writing and how small it is in comparison to the rest of the books that are in the Bible. I just cannot believe that is all Jesus said. That, that, that just cannot be it. There has to be more to it than what is in the Bible. And then I think about the disciples and I recall their names. And why don't I see books, more books in the Bible that were written by the disciples themselves? Now, there are a few books in the Bible that were written by disciples, but not all the books that the disciples have written are in the Bible. So let us understand that the writings of God, this world itself, could not contain all of the writings of God, including the depths of the ocean, could not contain all the writings of God. So let us go through the Gospel of Thomas. You should look this up for yourself. You should go to the audiobook on my page and, and listen to it. Listen to the audiobook if you don't have time to read it. Listen to it while you're at work. Listen to it while you're going to sleep. It's nothing like going to sleep, listening to the word 
of God. So, so as we go through, we're going to go through the Gospel of Thomas, and we're going to start off with the secret saying, and we're going to start off with saying one. Saying one. He said, whoever finds this, excuse me, saying one, who, he said, whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings will not taste death. So we do understand that Jesus is letting us know from the saying one that if we can understand what these, in, these sayings mean, if we can interpret these sayings that Jesus spoke, not only to the disciples that we know in the Bible, because yes, there were 12 disciples that are mainframed in the Bible, but there are much more because if you go to the book of Acts, if I'm not mistaken, there are more disciples and prophets than just the 12 we know about. Jesus had easily 70 plus disciples. That's including women. Prophetess, prophets, it does not matter because we're all human before we are divided. And every man does have estrogen and every woman does have testosterone, the, the dominant in between. We have to understand that we are one God's creation we are all made in the image and in the likeness of God. So let us under this, let us go to saying two. Saying two, Jesus said, "Let one who seeks not stop seeking until one finds. When one finds, one will be disturbed. When one is disturbed, one will be amazed, and will reign over all." So. On saying two, Jesus is letting us know, as it does say in the Bible, as it does say in the Bible, seek. It tells us seek and don't stop until one finds. So seek and ye shall find, but don't stop until you find. Then it goes on further than what is not in the Bible. Jesus goes on to say, when one finds, one will be disturbed. What does Jesus mean when he says, when one finds, one will be disturbed? Now, let's think about this. Sometimes in life, when we really want to know something, when we really want to understand something in life, we research it and we study it and we study it. And then once we find out the facts about what We've been looking for. Sometimes we can't sleep. Sometimes it's not what we thought it would be. Sometimes it's more than we thought it would be. So when one finds, one will be disturbed. To be disturbed means that you, 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 you are not just focused. You, you're a little bit distracted. You have some sort of disruption in your normal thought process so that you have that on top of everything else you're thinking about what you have just discovered will be on your mind and you might want to talk about that you might want to spread that out when one is disturbed one will be amazed and will reign over all so Jesus also goes on to say, after we are disturbed, after we are restless in our mind, in our thought, from what we have discovered, it will amaze us. It will cause us to sit back and reflect and to think on it and to see what could potentially come from that, what we have found out, whether it is good or bad. And then once we find out, we will reign over all now so if you, say for instance it is not a positive thing that you've just found out but you are ahead of the curve because you took the time and you were diligent and you studied it so when you do get this bad information and people think they might surprise you with it you already have your plan b in motion because again jesus said when one is disturbed, one will be amazed and will reign 
overall. So that bad situation or that problem, you turned into a project. So instead of it being a problem to you, you look at it like a project and you all have already taken certain steps to fulfilling that prophecy, to making sure it comes to pass. Instead of it being negative, it's positive. That's one interpretation of it. Now, we're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, fast forward down to a few more of these sayings. Because Jesus has several sayings. It is 113 sayings. And I, I do have the full audio books in about 56 minutes worth. Let's go to saying nine. Saying nine, Jesus said, Behold, the sower went out, took a handful of seeds, and scattered them. Some fell on the road, and the birds came and ate them. Others fell on rock, and they did not take root in the soil or produce any heads of grain. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns choked the seeds, and worms consumed them. Still, others fell on good soil and brought forth a good crop. It yielded 60 per measure and 120 per measure. Now, that is very similar to what we do and what we have read in the Bible. If you've studied the Bible, you've read something like this in the Bible. Do you see how these sayings, line up, but they fall a little bit short of what Jesus is saying. They leave certain parts out. And this is why you must find God for yourself. This is why you must study the word of God. This is why you must go beyond the holy, blessed instructions before leaving earth. The holy blessed instructions before leaving earth. You must go beyond those basics right here and delve further into the word of God. Because God did say in the Bible there will be hidden mysteries revealed. And God is revealing those mysteries to our generation. We are that select generation and the ones that know it and have their hands on it shall go about and be fruitful and multiply and spread the word of God and let others know the word of God is out here. And that is part of the seed falling on fertile and good soil. The ones who know this information that I am saying, that is like the seed falling on the road and the birds coming to eat the seeds. That is like the seeds falling in between the weeds and the thorns and the thistles. And they're being choked. And the worms come and consume them. But when you know the word of God and you spread it. And you spread the goodness of God. That is you being on fertile soil. And that is you being fruitful and multiplying. And that is what God wants us to do. That is what Jesus wants us to do. Saying 10. Jesus said, I have thrown fire on the world, and behold, I am guarding it until it is ablaze. Now, what do you think that Jesus means when Jesus says, I have thrown fire on the world, and behold, I am guarding it until it is ablaze? Saying 10 is a very interesting saying. I have thrown fire on the world. And behold, I am guarding it until it is ablaze. Now, when Jesus left, before Jesus left, Jesus anointed our ancestors with cloven tongues of fire. Remember this. Remember this, that is Jesus letting us know 
that he is with us. He has not left us. And he has set this world ablaze through the Holy Spirit. Now, are we utilizing those cloven tongues of fire? Are we utilizing that? Because to speak negatively and to throw balls of fire out in a negative fashion, that is not cloven tongue of fire. That is just you spewing out. But the cloven tongues of fire, that is what Jesus is speaking about here in saying 10, I have thrown fire on the world and behold, I am guarding it until it is ablaze. That is Jesus saying, I am here with you. I have not left you. I have not forsaken you. You must understand that. That is what Jesus is saying to us. When he is saying that, that is insane ten. Now, let's go up to saying number seven. I'm not doing it in any particular order. It's in order on the full audio book on my page. Saying ten, excuse me, is where we just left. Saying seven is where we're headed now. Jesus said, Blessed is the lion that the human eats so that the lion becomes human. Cursed is the human that the lion eats so that the lion becomes human. Now, doesn't Jesus have a way with words? Doesn't God, the creator of all, have a way with words? Now, I'll repeat saying seven again. I'll repeat it at least twice. Jesus said, blessed is the lion that the human eats so that the lion becomes human. Cursed is the human that the lion eats so that the lion becomes human. You following Jesus here? Are you following what Jesus is saying? Saying seven, Jesus said, blessed is the lion that that the human eats so that the lion becomes human. Now, okay, blessed is the lion that the human eats so that the lion becomes human. You have to understand that when you break that bread and you consume the word of God, that is like the lion Judah. That is what you're consuming. You consume it. You don't let it consume you. Be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And if you pay close attention, these sayings they are actually speaking and giving you the answer in other sayings. If you align them together, that is what they are doing. Cursed is the human that the lion eats so that the lion becomes human. The evil spirits, the evil doings, the wickedness, you cannot let that enter you. You cannot let the evil doings and wickedness enter you. You must keep the breastplate. You must stay in all the armor of God. Because if you stay in all the armor of God, you will devour the lion and the lion will become human because the lion is inside of you. But if the lion consumes you and the lion becomes human, it is because the lion has tasted. That is the difference. You give the lion no chance. You give evil no chance. You obliterate evil, eradicate evil. That is what you do. You look evil in the eye and you make evil flee like pigs off of a cliff, just how Jesus did. Because in the Bible, 
John chapter 14, Jesus did say that he's going to be with the Father and that we shall go about and do greater works than what Jesus has done. Jesus said that in this book. Keep that in mind. These are the secret sayings of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, also known as the Gospel of Thomas. Let us go down to verse, or excuse me, saying 13. Saying 13. Jesus said to his disciples, compare me with someone and tell me who I am like. Simon Peter said, you are like a just angel. Matthew said to him, you are like a wise philosopher. Thomas said to him, teacher, my mouth is utterly unable to say whom you are like. Jesus said, I am not your teacher. You have become intoxicated because you have drunk from the bubbling spring that I have tended. And he took Thomas and withdrew and told him three things. When Thomas came back to his friends, they asked him, what did Jesus tell you? Thomas said to them, if I tell you even one of the things he told me, you will pick up rocks and stone me. Then fire will come forth from the rocks and devour you. Now, hmm, saying 13, that is a, that is a real catchy, Catchy, catchy saying because Jesus did ask his disciples in the Bible, in this book, what, what do the nation, what do the masses say about me? What are they saying? And let's see. Simon Peter. Simon Peter turned around and compared Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to a just angel. A just, a just angel. An angel that does just work. Then Matthew. And Simon was thinking, he was like, what, how can I compare? What can I compare Jesus to? Matthew compared Jesus to a wise philosopher, to a professor, to a teacher, to, well, to a philosopher, because a philosopher is not necessarily a teacher. He, he compared him to a philosopher. And then Thomas said to him, teacher, my mouth is, un, is utterly unable to say whom you are like. Now, out of those three, he pulls Thomas to the side. Now keep in mind the gospel that I am reading the saying from is the gospel of Thomas. And Thomas is known in the Bible, in this book, as Doubting Thomas. Now if you know Thomas like I know Thomas, Thomas never doubted. Never doubted. Ever doubted. This is why Thomas has the privilege of writing these sayings. Not any other disciple had the privilege of writing this because this is the one Jesus talked to. Matthew also has these writings because Matthew recorded it off of Thomas. Okay? So Thomas has these sayings. And Thomas was the one that Jesus pulled to the side because Thomas said, I don't know who to compare you to, Jesus. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to compare you to an angel. No, I don't think you're like an angel. No, I don't think you're like a wise philosopher. And he says, I don't know who to compare you to, teacher. And then Jesus says to him, I am not your teacher. Jesus tells Thomas, I'm not your teacher. He didn't say to Simon Peter, I am not your angel. He didn't say to Matthew, I am not your philosopher. But he said to Thomas, I am not your teacher. Now, 
Why would he tell Thomas that? Why I'm gonna stop right there? Why would he tell Thomas, I am not your teacher? The reason he told Thomas, I am not your teacher, is because I am a living vessel. The one who is inside of me is teaching you. And I am trying to get you to understand that that it person or that creator, not person, God is not a person. That creator, God, that is inside of me is inside of you, Thomas. That is what I am telling you. And then Jesus goes on further to say, you have become intoxicated because you have drunk from the bubbling spring that I have tended. That is Jesus again answering the questions of his own sayings. He told Thomas he was not his teacher. He said that for a reason, because it's God that's doing the teaching. God is speaking. Jesus was a vessel. Jesus had the spirit of God in him and was fully aware that he had the spirit of God in him with no equivocation in thought or action. This is what Jesus was saying. Now, when Jesus turns around and says, you have become intoxicated because you have drunk from the bubbling spring that I have tended, answers the part that where he says, I'm not your teacher. He says, I am tending. I am tending to this. Meaning, I am the watcher. I am guard. I am guarding this. I am the one tending to the garden. I am the gardener. But I did not create this. God created this. The the uncreated spirit that we call God, the nameless one, which no one on earth knows the name of God, for surely they would die. Is the one, and this is what Jesus is saying to Thomas. The reason you feel this way, Thomas, is because you are intoxicated. You are drunk in the spirit, Thomas. You're not understanding, Thomas. All of this is already in you. All of this is in you. I'm the one tending to this, Thomas. I'm the one tending this living word, this living water, this everlasting water. That is what I'm doing. That's what he told Thomas. And he took Thomas and withdrew and told him three things. So, that is the catch. Those three things, Jesus and Thomas, is between Jesus and Thomas. Thomas didn't even disclose those three things in these things. He did not. He did not disclose him. That was personal. So that ought to tell you that Thomas, out of the disciples that was there, had a further inclination of who Jesus was because he didn't insult Jesus by comparing him to a philosopher or comparing him to a just angel. And then when Thomas returned, Thomas couldn't even tell his friends because his friends didn't have enough knowing. They believed, but they didn't have enough knowing. Thomas had knowledge within Jesus already at this juncture. And this is why Thomas was able to record these things. This is why Thomas was selected to record these things. So let us go further. Into the sayings. Let us go to saying 21. Saying 21. Mary said to Jesus, Whom are your disciples like? He said, They are like little children living in a field that is not theirs. When the owner of the field comes, they will say, Give our field back to us. The children would take off their clothes in the presence of the owners and thus give the field back and return it to them. For this reason, I say, if the owner of a house knows that the thief is coming, the owner will be on guard before the thief arrives 
and will not let the thief break into the house of the estate and steal the possessions. As for you, then be on guard against the world. Gird yourself and prepare for action so that the robbers will find no way to prevail against you for the trouble you expect will come. Now, that is Mary right there speaking, asking Jesus a question. This is Mary Magdalene. This is Mary Magdalene sitting down with Jesus because Mary was a prophetess, not a prostitute. Mary was a prophetess and she was sitting down with Jesus and the disciples because she was a disciple herself. She asked Jesus a question. Whom are your disciples like? Jesus said the disciples are like children playing in territory that's not theirs. Jesus said the disciples are like children playing on land that is not theirs. Jesus said that because this world is not our home. This world is not our home. And when the owners come and ask for the land back, the children strip. They strip in front of the owners and give the owners their land back. So let's stop right there. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Free spirit. Nakedness of the spirit. Before God. Before Jesus. Before the Holy Spirit. Naked. And then came forethought, knowledge. And then they clothed themselves as they played in God's playground. This is why you must stand guard. This is why the homeowner must be there to stand guard and know. Because Jesus said, I will come like a thief in the night. You don't know when I'm coming. So essentially, that means you must be vigilant. You must be prepared at all times, all times, to give God what is God's. All times. Don't get caught slipping. That's what Jesus is essentially saying to Mary and the rest of the disciples. Don't get caught slipping. Do the right thing. And when, when it's, your time is here, make sure that you are ready. Make sure that you don't need anything on. Make sure that you are naked and your spirit is fully exposed. Because you should be naked before God. Your spirit should be right there shining forth. Now, let God take me to another saying. Take me to a saying, God. What particular saying would you like me to go to? Okay, Jesus. Saying 38. Jesus said, Often you have desired to hear these sayings that I am telling you, and you will have no one else from whom to hear them. There will be days you will seek me, but will not find me. Hmm. Now that's something. Okay, again, saying 38. Jesus said, often you have desired to hear these sayings that I am telling you. And you have no and you have no one else from whom to hear them. There will be days you will seek me, but will not find me. So essentially, everything that Jesus has been telling us. We've been wanting to hear these things. We've been wanting to hear these things. And now that we hear these things, are we going to remember these things? Are we going to act upon these things? Are we going to be fruitful and multiply and share these things and help others understand these things? Because Jesus, again, has gone to be with the Father, and it's our job. 
our job to be fruitful and multiply and spread the word of God throughout this entire world. It's our job to do it. It's our job to introduce the writings of Jesus. It's our job to introduce the writings of the disciples that are not found in the Bible. We must be the ones to do it. This has nothing to do with Christianity because Jesus wasn't a Christian. Jesus was not a Christian. There were no Christians when Jesus walked the earth. There were only children of God when Jesus walked this earth. We must understand Jesus wasn't a Christian. Christianity didn't come till how many years after Jesus died? Jesus didn't say, I came for the Christians. Jesus said, I came for the people of God. Everybody. Because we all were made in the image and likeness of God. So don't play that religious game. Because religion is, uh, what, what does religion mean? We've talked about it. Religion means to bind back again. That's what religion means, to bind back again. God came to break the yoke. God's yoke is easy and light. We must remember that. So as we go through these sayings, we have to understand that there are so many other writings that God has for us out there that we choose not to find out about. We don't ask questions about. We, do, we, we just don't. I'm going to go to saying 113. Saying 113. Simon Peter said to them, let Mary leave us because women are not worthy of life. Jesus said, behold, I shall guide her so as to make her male that she too may become a living spirit like you men. For every woman who makes herself male will enter the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> so here we go. That's not in the Bible. So Simon Peter, a lot of people don't really know this, but Simon Peter hated Mary. Simon Peter had a disdain for Mary Magdalene. So much so that Simon Peter said in the midst of all these people, because you have to keep this in mind. It's not one or two people sitting here. Jesus is speaking to the mass of his prophets, the mass of his disciples. And Thomas is the one that is selected to take these dictations. Simon Peter said to them, let Mary leave us because women are not worthy of life. Now, as Simon Peter said something so stupid, because he's human. Simon Peter was human and he had anger issues. But that's stupid. Simon Peter, he had a wife of his own. He had a wife. And for you to even think to say to your fellow disciple that you are not worthy of life or to say out loud that women are not worthy of life, no matter what year it is, no matter what year it is to say that. When Simon knows that the name Eve, E-V-E, -E, the name Eve means life itself. The name Eve means life itself. Women or life itself. Adam means dirt, red clay, red soil, dirt. Adam means dirt. Eve means life. That is what the name Eve means, is life. So back again to saying 113. Simon Peter said to them, let Mary leave us because women are not worthy of life. Jesus said, behold, I shall guide her so as to make her male. Now, what does that mean? I shall guide her as to make her male. That is to give her the confidence. That is to let her know that anything I can do as a man, this woman can do better. Anything that a man can do, a woman can do. No one ever said that God gave man dominance. God didn't give men dominance 
God didn't give women dominance. God gave us dominion, and we get that confused. Dominance and dominion are not the same thing. This is what is happening now. What Jesus is speaking about is happening now. That's why in the United States, we do have a vice president. That is a woman. That is a lady that gets things done. That is why there are so many women who are in seeking and they are gaining that advancement because men throughout time keep repeating the same idiotic mistakes over and over as a mass. This is not an individual thing. I'm a man. Hmm? This is not an individual thing. This is a collective thing. And Jesus is speaking about it right here in saying 113. I shall guide her so as to make her male that she too may become a living spirit like you men. For every woman who makes herself male will enter the kingdom of God. Every woman that looks at herself as an equal, not less than, not more than, but equal, as an equal counterpart, as an equal opportunity, whether they want to give you that equal opportunity or not, as long as you see yourself as an equal, then God shall guide you the rest of the way. I'm pretty sure you can ask some woman, some lady, hallelujah, that has gone through something and she refused to see herself as less than. I know in my personal life, my wife is that way. I know my mother is that way. I know my sister is that way as well. I know my grandmother is that way, rest their soul as well. I know several women in my life that are equal and have never seen themselves as less than. And because of that, they have skyrocketed and they have elevated and they have done more than the women of their generation and in their time. So that is what Jesus is saying. If you see yourself as an equal, I will meet you there. Because remember, it does say in the Bible, God will meet you where you are. Jesus will meet you where you are. And Jesus says right here, I shall guide her so as to make her male that she too may become a living spirit like you men. For every woman who makes herself male will enter the kingdom of heaven because she knows herself and she refuses to be less than anyone else. That is what it's about because we are one race, God's race, the human race. We are not a male race. We are not a female race. As a matter of fact, there are more women on the planet than men. We must understand, not less than, not greater than. We are equal. We are equal in the eyes of God. We're equal. So that is what Jesus is saying in saying 113, 113. That is what Jesus is saying. Let us go to 111. Jesus said, woe to the flesh that depends on the soul. I'll say that again because it's an exc exclamation point behind that. So let's say it again. Jesus said, woe to the flesh that depends on the soul. Woe to the soul that depends on the flesh. There's exclamation points behind it. So Jesus really meant that. So, you know, I'm, Jesus said it that way. So therefore, I, I had to say it that way. All right. Now. Woe to the flesh that depends on the soul. Hmm. Woe to the flesh that depends on the soul. So woe to the body that depends on the spirit. Woe to the soul that depends on the flesh. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? Woe to the flesh that depends on the soul. What that is telling you is depend on God. Because don't depend on your spirit. Don't depend on your soul. Depend on God. 
Woe to the soul that depends on the flesh. Depend on God. That's all that means is depend on God. Don't depend on your, your wherewithal. Depend on God. That's what you do. Also, don't depend just on what's inside of you. Depend on God. Don't depend on your muscle. Depend on God. That is what saying 111 means. We must understand that depend on God. And we must also help each other break down what the sayings mean. Help each other understand certain things in our lives. Okay? I'm going to go through a few more sayings. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to saying 75. All right? We're going to go to saying 75. Saying 75. Jesus said, I am the light that is over all things. I am all. All came forth from me and all attained to me. Split a piece of wood and I am hanging there. Pick up a stone and you will find me there. Now, that's not in the Bible. There's so much of this that's not in the Bible. But any which way, what does that mean when Jesus says, I am the light that is over all things? He's the son of God. Jesus is the son of God. He is the light over all things. He's over all things. All things. This all things were created. And Jesus is over all that. I am all. He's God. God is in him. He is aware of this. He knows this. He knows. That is the catch. All came forth from me. And all attained to me. Again, if you pick up the Bible, the Holy Bible, the Holy Blessed Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Pick that up. And we go through it. And it says, right here on Genesis, Chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Mm. So now, again, we go back here to saying 75. Jesus said, I am the light that is over all things. Okay. Now, here he is. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. That is in the NIV. Or oh, the spirit of God moved across the waters. It was moving across the waters. I-N-G. I-N-G means motion. Hovering across the waters. So there's the Holy Spirit. Here's Jesus, and here's God, right here in Genesis. So when Jesus says in the secret sayings of Jesus, I am the light, he means he's the light, everything. When he says I am all, he means he is all. He was there with God in the beginning, in the beginning. Even though they talk about Jesus in the, in the New Testament, Jesus was here from the beginning. From the beginning. Don't let these 66 stop you. 
Don't let these 66 make you miss what else God has for you. Don't let the 66 books in the Bible make you miss what else God has for you. You need to go through the 66 thoroughly. Understand the 66 so you can go beyond the 66. You can't tell me you're living life just to live life. You do want a higher station in heaven now, don't you? You do want to be able to do the will of God in a higher capacity, don't you? I mean, you should. If you don't want to, you should. And you should need to. But anyway... All came forth from me. Here we go again. And all attained to me. All given to God. Attained. He has everything. Split a piece of wood. And I'm hanging there. Pick up a stone. And you'll find me there. So that means Jesus is what? Everything. Everywhere. Omnipresent. Omnipresent, spirit, forever moving, rest and motion. That's what we have to understand. Split a piece of wood, I'm hanging there. What did Jesus do? Jesus literally died for us. He hung on the cross. Lift a rock, you find Jesus there too. Because he's everything. That is essentially what that means. It's, it's saying it right here. For us in these sayings. In these sayings. So this is a little bit about the secret sayings of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, our personal Lord and Savior. As I flip through some more of these sayings. Mm -hmm. You should take a listen to the audio book. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. Let us say a prayer. Because God is good all the time. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazareth, our personal Lord and Savior, thanking you for exposing those secrets and those mysteries, Father, that are in hidden places, Father. For I am not afraid, Father, for I fear not, and I will go down into those deep, dark places, Father, and reveal and speak that word, Father, for you. I ask that, Father, other people join in the movement, Father, of using social media, using YouTube as God's account, God's center, God's outlet. I would ask that more people, Father, speak up and speak out and tell their stories of how you have been a blessing to them, how they can use their stories of failure, Father, Father, to expose your Father for you so that other people can see that they can be victorious and receive everything that you do have for them, my God. For these and many other blessings, we will continuously pray in the word and blood of your darling son, Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, our personal Lord and Savior who died for our sins individually and collectively by the way of the grace and mercy of the power of the ever-loving Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you indeed and acknowledge you, God, here on social media, here on YouTube, and every other platform, Father. Indeed. Amen. Amen. And amen. God is good, and we must continue, continue, continue to give God praise. We can't stop. If you know what God has put into your heart, and you're not speaking what God has put into your heart, you won't rest. You will not rest until you speak what God has put into your heart, until you use the word of God the way God needs. I can't get rest until I do so. And if you can, then you're lucky. That means you believe in God. And once you start to know God, once you get into the knowing of who God is, then God will send you in many different directions. God will send many different words your way. Then you'll be able to know yourself a little bit better once you begin to speak to God on a continuum. On a regular basis. Yeah, let people think you're crazy. How much time do you have here? How much time? They lived hundreds of years. We have hundred. I am in my 40s. Average American lives to be in their 70s, 80s, 90s. But come on. So I need to make sure I am doing what I need to do. And that's what it's all about. 
Make sure that you do what you need to do for God. Make sure you put Jesus Christ the Nazareth in first place in your life. Make sure that you go out and you research and you study the word of God for yourself. You have to be that one to study the word of God for your own self. You have to. Why do you have to? Because at the end of it all, at the end of it all, it will only be you and God. That's it. No one else will be there. There will not be an audience with an applause. It will be only you and God. And guess what? This, this thing can't go. Uh, this thing can't go. Uh, what I'm recording on now, it, it can't go. You know, these beads, they can't go. Understand what I'm saying? It's not about any of this material stuff. I don't care what you wear, wood, um, metals. I don't care. God doesn't care about any of that. But God cares about your spirit. God cares about you using those cloven tongues of fire that God has put in you. God cares about you digging deep and finding a way to be with God. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. And I pray that God grants the desires of your heart. But I pray first that you ask God so that God can grant the desires of your heart. Ask God. Speak to God. People don't come on social media. People don't get on YouTube asking you or talking to you to, and telling you to speak to God for their own well-being. They don't do that. They, they do it because God put it in their heart to tell you to speak to God. Talk to God. God is listening. God is there. We must do that. God doesn't care about anything else but you. God doesn't care about anything else but me. Now, isn't that funny? That God can just be that omnipresent? Come on. Let's join the movement of positivity. Let's join the movement of putting God first in our lives. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. Ask God, grant all the desires of your heart, and you get any and everything you ask God for. Amen.